Satisfries, a new lower fat option from Burger King. Get satisfied with 30% less fat and great taste. Burger King, taste is king. Well, if you ever saw them, you can say goodbye to Satisfries. Apparently, Burger King's low calorie French fries didn't whet the appetite of consumers in the fast food chain taking them off the menu in almost all their locations across North America. Burger, King, Burger King's announcement comes the same week as a new pair of studies say the maximum sodium recommendations are too low and could even be unsafe. Jeff Steyer is with the National Center for Public Policy Research, joins me from New York. Jeff, this is a bad week for food police, isn't it? It is. I think it exposes the fact that the food police, the nanny state, the people who want to use government control to tell us how to live, don't really care about their science. They're driven by this neo-puritanical ideological agenda, and they stick with it even when the science goes the other way. All right, well, I want to get to, to Burger King because I think that's funny. It's industry trying to do what the food police say they want and consumers not responding. But let's start with Martin O'Donnell, a quote from the New England Journal of Medicine and one of these sodium studies. Low sodium intake does reduce blood pressure modestly compared to moderate intake, but low sodium intake also has other effects, including elevations of certain hormones that are associated with an increase in risk of death in cardiovascular diseases. We found the lowest risk of death in cardiovascular events in those who consumed moderate amounts of sodium intake, three to six grams per day. Uh, they're trying to say we should only have 2.3 grams per day, according to the health experts. That would be a lot lower than what these guys found. It sounds to me like my mother's old advice of everything in moderation might be right. It's true, but it's even a little bit um, more dramatic than that. The American Heart Association, which is a mainstream public health group in the U.S. that the government relies on to help set numbers, says 1.5, 1, 1 even lower than that. And what these studies found is that people in the middle range of the uh, salt intake, whether it's putting salt on your fruit or added salt, people in that middle range, everyone says it's way too high, people in the middle range are living longer than people at the very low range, within the American Heart Association guidelines, or at the very high range. And the science is becoming more and more clear on sodium, which is the levels that most of us are consuming doesn't harm us. There are some people with very high levels of blood pressure that are salt sensitive that need to reduce their intake. But for the rest of us, it doesn't make a big difference. We've got to be eating lots of fruits and vegetables, but the salt intake for most of us doesn't matter. Yet government guidelines, both Health Canada and in the U.S., are pushing for not low, but very low levels. L Libby Davies is... Uh, They're asking for dramatic changes in our health. Yeah, well, Libby Davies says uh, we're not doing it ourselves, so the government needs to get involved. I want to play a clip from her. Uh, this is last year as she's trying to convince governments to force food manufacturers and restaurants to change the way we eat. We'll roll clip. It's a very broad public health issue. Uh, the fact is we're all eating too much salt. It's not good for us. Some of us are at greater risk. So if I'm at greater risk, um, I can go to my doctor. I can find out if I am in that greater risk. You know, I just had my uh, physical in March, told me that I'm not. So I should be fine in the moderate. But if I was at risk, then I could adjust myself accordingly. Why does everyone have to suffer? Brian, let me explain the, the insanity of the, of the system that we're in now, where the government and activists are pushing the government to change the way we eat. They ignore the science. In fact, they'll often say, well, we're not sure yet. So let's use the precautionary principle. If we're not sure yet, better to be safe than sorry. If we only have a little bit of scientific evidence, why, why mess things up? Let's, let's just be safe. Well, the safe thing we're learning is moderate intake. The government plan here in New York, where I live, former Mayor Bloomberg, tried to lower salt intake. Government in Canada wants to do the same. If we actually lower salt intake, according to the latest studies in the New England Journal of Medicine, we're actually putting consumers at risk. This would be a mass experiment to dramatically lower salt levels. You're right, if individuals have high blood pressure, at risk of heart disease, and have high salt intakes, that section of the population ought to change their behavior. And the claim that we're all getting our, our salt from processed foods is ridiculous because you can buy for the people who want to lower their salt intake, can buy lower sodium foods. Consumers have choice, and you know industry what? can sell consumers what they want. There, there is a specific brand of lightly salted chips that my wife and I love, 
Um, and, and those are the ones that we choose to buy because we like the taste, not because they're healthier for us. I doubt they are. Uh, I want to bring up um, a board and just talk about some of the failed examples. Like Burger King, Satisfries failed, but like uh, Burger King, other companies have tried this, including the McLean Deluxe. We had that at McDonald's. That came and went. Pizza Hut's The Natural, all-natural organic pizza. McDonald's Fruit and Walnut Salad. McDonald's pulled the plug after listening to customers who said they didn't want it. Dairy Queen had The Breeze, you know, low fat. You know, if you're going to Dairy Queen, are you really listening, looking for low fat? Industry keeps doing this. That, Consumers exactly keep it. walking with their tongues, right, and walking away from these things. Industry is, do industry is doing it because they've come under attack and threat of regulation. So... What we, what we ought to learn is that the public health community is driven by an ideology, a, near, a neo puritanical ideology that ignores the science, wants to, and, and ignores human nature. We've been eating salt for a long time through human history, and it's essential. But when the government comes in and tells us how we ought to live, pushed by activist groups, and the science doesn't support them, they push back anyway. And it has no relation to how we actually live our lives. And what we ought to be doing is we ought to be entrusting a public health community that relies on the science and can figure out ways to help people rather than punish people for not following the lifestyles that that segment of the population wants us to live. All right, Jeff, thanks for the common sense and for pushing back against the nanny state. We'll chat again, I'm sure.